Okay, well, welcome to another issue of How the Pen Turns. Uh, and welcome to our new studio. Uh, the Hocusons have graciously allowed us to use their shop for our meeting to do the demo tonight for us on uh, small items, bottle stoppers, tops, jewelry, and like that. So I'm going to turn it over to Gordon. Okay. Well, welcome to the studios of the Hokinsons. Tonight we're going to have fun, but right now it's good to see everybody. Uh, we always enjoy at least getting together this way. I've got the added privilege of seeing Jim and Debbie with, in person, and that's a rare treat the last two or three months. Great you brought supper. <laughs> <laughs> hope everybody's well, and hope everybody's, everybody's ready to learn how to spin. Yes. We're going to talk about tops tonight. Two kinds of tops. Spinning tops and bottle stopper tops. Uh, we'll start out with the, with the, uh, the spinning top. Uh, the spinning top is, is known as, as other things other than spinning top. It's sometimes called by a, called a finger snap top. I don't know if you can see it from here. I hear you. All right. We're going to do some look at some different types of tops. Uh, tops have been around for almost forever. Uh, they kind of started out as sometimes just nuts with a pointy on the end, and kids would spin them. Uh, sometimes there were rocks. Uh, the potter's wheel is a top, and we want to look at particularly the playful tops tonight. Although some of these playful tops are also uh, people use them for gambling for prophecy, prophetic, pro, 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 prophesizing for things. Uh, they use them for competitions, and we're going to do it just for the playful part tonight. Got a little demo plate here, and we'll put a, a top on it. And, and it, it, it spins. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, we'll put a, another one on. Another one on. We just got them wandering all over the place. Um, anyway, tops, what, what are they made of? They're made of lots of things, wood, plastic, metal, and they, um, they, they're there to, right now, for me, they're very relaxing. You can see this one top that's been going for a while, and now we got another one. Um, there's three types of tops that, um, or several types of tops. There's the, the standard top, like, like this one. Oh, which way I pick away here? There we go. And that is the, kind of the standard top. There's some flat tops, they call flat top tops, and they're very, as you can see, and they can be decorative or Hang with Lewis with me here until I figure out the direction I gotta go for the camera. And now I know. And uh, it can be very pretty. Uh, it can be unusual shaped tops. Uh, the top's called a dreidel top. A dreidel is a top that is used um, a lot by the Jewish, early Israeli Jewish people as a game. It would have um, things painted on the on the sides, either characters or letters, and they would spin them for particular games. Um, some of the other tops, uh, remember um, way back um, when you were a kid and you had a little metal top? Gordon, that last. And it had a spiral thing that just run up and down. That's a top. Nick, um, Nick has a question. Pardon? Gordon, that last one you showed, does it have a point at the very bottom? The dreidel. Yeah, I would, no, the dreidel does not have a point. It's, it's a, it comes to a, I don't know if you can see it now. Let me find the camera. There you can see what it has. Oh, okay. It's just enough to get up. You can have different types of points on tops. You can have points that are extremely point, pointed. You can have tops that are slightly rounded or something like this, or even more so. Um, Tops that are like, like that. 
And so they vary, and it depends on how they're made, how they're weighted, how they're the uh, symmetry of them, the, um, the materials. Um, they'll spin under different conditions. Question answered? Nick? Yes, thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Um, anyway, there's um, uh, other top types of tops. There's what when you were, when I was a kid anyway, and of course that's back when we had to spin in the nuts and cook crap on rocks. <laughs> but the other types, there's one called a whip top, I don't have an example, a whip top, and it had, you wrap a rope around it, or a string rather, and it had a hard metal top, and you threw it like a, um, almost like cracking a whip. You hang on the string and it would start to spin. Some of the other types of tops are this side here. You may have had, it has a, a top. The top goes through the, the holder and you wrap a string around it. And when you pull the string, <laughs> that thing will spin probably the next 10 minutes. <laughs> But it, it's a fun top. Um, of course, there are game tops and other things. Uh, one of the things that makes a neat gift is I've got a, a, a box top. <laughs> um, and when the top of it is a top. And then the box. And you can take the top of uh, the box rather, turn it over and turn the top on. Another, another types of things. And all these make great gifts and, and um, just fun to make for satisfaction. Um, we're going to move on here, I think. See if there's anything else that I uh, need to... Uh, again, I talked about the symmetry or the the design of the top. Tops have a certain symmetry based on the width. The width of the top, the, can you see it? Okay. The width of the top, and then the height of the top, and then the weight of the top, and the material of the top. Uh, normally, a uh, wood that you might find in tops. Um, the denser the wood, the smaller the top can be. The lighter the weight the wood is, you can make much larger tops. This one's made out of mesquite. And um, anyway, the uh, body is important that the body is, you want straight green wood, you want uh, spindle direction wood, you want face wood, whatever, and that makes the better top, and, it'll, and you want a tight grain as well. Um, top, the, the points on them can be anywhere from this point here, well, where am I, oh, here we go. That point to a very, very sharp point. Um, the, the, the rounded tip provides more friction Therefore, it won't spin as long. The sharper the tip and the balance, but the sharper the tip, the better longer it will spin. Uh, well, we're going one more thing: the stem, which is a handle, the part you spin between your your thumb and finger, normally, um, is normally a quarter to to five sixteenths of an inch. <laughs> Excuse me. The thicker the stem is, the harder it is to spin. It's harder for your fingers to build up. And thinking about a bicycle, the smaller it is, that's the smaller gear. And your thumb and finger are the larger gear. So the smaller it is, the more you can, the more times it has to spin and gain some speed. You can decorate tops. We'll decorate one after we turn it. Um, you can't see it too much on there. You go. 
we're going to turn a, a, a basic top first, and we'll start with a clean block of wood. Normally, I like to work with about inch and a half to two inches uh, square and up to about five or six inches long. Uh, first thing I create is a, a tenon because we're going to put this in a chuck. So if I can figure this lay out. Is that maple? George Martin, what kind of wood is it? This one is hard maple. Hard maple, soft maple works. Any hardwood is, is um, works well. I like to work with when I'm turning just for rounding is a step center. You're familiar with them. across the top will be somewhere to two to two and a half inches total length. Um, normally there's a taper on the front which becomes part of the point and I usually allow for half an inch or so for that. Okay. And then there's the thickness of the of the top however thick you want to make it and then if you have any design above it uh, you can allow for that, and then the rest of it is the um, the handle or the stem, which will make somewhere around there. Which is a, so we use these as the measurements to work turn to, and uh, I am going to turn the speed down here. stem gets down to a quarter to five sixteenths of an inch, it's pretty um, unstable. It will um, twist and I don't have one with me but I've got three or four that um, I've twisted off before I finally figured that out. It's just like making a finial. You start at the thin end, in the case of a finial, 
and work and keep maintaining as much support for this until you get to the point where you're having to do the thin part. Okay, let's we'll see if we can't put a, a, a face on this and a, and a point is the first thing. Just to start out and do some rounding. Is there a camera where you can show your tool? Oh, okay, I see it down at the bottom. a spindle gouge what kind of tool are you using the spindle gouge uh three eighths inch okay. that one got hit um the bottom one there's is the gouge uh if you can see the size on it it's got a, a very shallow um flute in it it's a thompson gouge and again, ground to, to um, 35 degrees and then a uh, um, little bit of flare out on the bottom for spacing. Now we'll kind of just clean off the, the face of it. Maybe do a little spacing on it. Give it a, Concave area, and then we'll take it the rest of the way in to create a top area. Open this up now, where we can get the chisel in. that are used, that I use anyway, to take get rid of this bulk once I've got the top part pretty much cleaned up, is um, either a, a parting tool, rather really large parting tool, or a, a bowl gouge. Um, <coughs> I'm starting to like the parting tool better because I can clean up and seem like a lot more cleaner and faster. So I'm going to use that for the night. Thank <laughs> you. 
Of the silence, um, that pretty much shapes the top. Um, put a little sanding on it. Um, If you were going to texturize it or color it, would you do it before you started on the stem? I'd do it right now, personally. Okay. I, just want, I, didn't want the, I, didn't know the stem, I didn't know if the stem was strong enough. That's all. Is the stem strong enough to colorize? Oh, yeah. The stem definitely that. We'll colorize it as well as uh, that. Um, somebody give me a color. Pick your color. True. Green, we got one. Anything else to go with that? Black, maybe? Gordon, before you part that off, um, what were the dimensions that you had that goes out to those different pieces of that? Okay, the dimensions, no, the piece of wood was a um, two by two by, uh, how you like to start out with about six inches. That way I can make two tops out of it. Um, two by two by six, and then the top itself will be, well, um, however long that is, probably two and a half inches maybe. The base can be any angle you want, which makes, the, of course, the measurement 
longer. This one I marked at about a half an inch. The thickness, again, can be anything you want. The thicker it is, sometimes it, um, um, it will tend to, to not spin as well unless the stem is fairly thin. But you want the weight as low as possible on the um, top to, to uh, get the best effect. The point on it is a, not a sharp point, and it's uh, just a fairly smooth point is all it is. And the rest of it is uh, like this distance is maybe what, inch and three quarters for the stem. And that gives you the best, uh, the best balance I've found. Thanks. Coloring it is real easy. I don't know if you want spirals or if you want rings. If you, if you go slow, you can get spirals. See if we can get that. Uh, let's do a green spiral. By the way, these are just uh, sharpie, uh, real sharp point. Um, see, real sharp point. They last a long time, do a good job. Um, you get them in sets of about 15 colors or so. Make a spiral. You can see that. And then uh, we'll do the tip of it a black. And make the outside rim a black. Maybe, you know, okay. um, do the outside here a black. Um, each end. And dollop, we'll dollop this thing up. Well, I slipped, but that's all right. Good enough. Anyway, can you see the colors on that from either the overhead or the front on? Yeah. Um, not enough color for me. I'm going to put some red on. Now then, it can be parted off. So close. It's a little more distance, Gordon. Pardon? Move it back just a little bit from okay, the camera. Like that. There you go. There you go. <clears throat> Doesn't focus good up close. And let's now see if it'll spin. Big test. Said there's other types of tops. We we'll want to just touch on one, on one, and then we'll turn another one. There's 
uh, a top that a lot of people like. They're fun to watch if you can turn it and make it work. So far, I've not had any luck. It's called the tippy top, for those that have heard of it um, or haven't heard of it. This one, I guess. Tippy top is a, a round top. It has a, a bottom on it that's round. It's kind of shaped like a pumpkin, and it's got a short stem on it because it has to flow, continue the round from the bottom up to the top because what this will do is it'll spin for quite some time and then as it starts to slow down, there's a word called, called pre, um, precession. precession, and it will force it to turn and, and, and spin on the top, on the handle, on the stem. Someday I will demonstrate one of those, but it won't be tonight. But it's a fun top. Uh, people have seen it. Um, Alan Lacer's wife enjoys turning them. Um, so a lot of people have turned them. Um, the third top is called a peg top. A peg top is basically a scrap piece of wood, rounded, and a Three inch, I put a three eighth inch dowel in it, run it all the way through to the bottom, glue it in, and this becomes um, something you can turn and, and use up wasted wood or scrap wood. Um, let's we'll see if we can't get one tonight. And then we'll move on to our bottle stoppers. I don't have a chuck. Okay, I don't have a chuck that fits this this size, a standard chuck. So I use a collet chuck, and collet chuck works real good on it. One of the things you have to consider on the collet chuck, however, is um, you're turning the big part against the weakest part. So I found that I put it in fairly far into the um, dowel and turn the, the bolt and then, then start to work my way out. This is a three eighths inch truck and a three eighths inch dowel that there we go. I normally run it in about that far and that, until I get done and ready for the stem. Well, Chucks, if you don't have one, they're really handy on small things. Especially if you're getting into pens. <coughs> pens that are um, kitless or uh, componentless. This, I'm going to make, um, make it as flat and thin as I can because of the weight distribution and so on.
That thing's that thing's bending. <laughs> Wobbling. Okay, there's the bottom. You tried. <laughs> this is this wood, I guess. I don't know if it's soft enough or what, but it's. Um, very catchy. Anyway, it's a short top. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too heavy to turn. Anyway, but the intent was to get it to this. Where am I? Okay. To get it down to that thin makes a nice. Uh, spinning top and it looks good. So, sorry we didn't get there. So could you have used a live center while you were doing that bulk removal? Yeah, that probably would have been a good idea. And I didn't think about that. That's be good support on it. Next demonstration we'll do that. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm trying to get that right here. We're going to turn to um, bottle stoppers. Any questions on tops, by the way? No? When you, how do you, you turn how to do right one that turns upside down, I'd love to know the dimensions. Say it again. I said when you, when you go to turn, when you figure out how to do the one that turns upside down, I would love to know the dimensions on how to do that. I will send you, this is who, Andrew? Chris. Oh, that bucket oh, Chris, I will send you a article on it. We'll have all that information. Okay, excellent. Thanks. Gordon, how do you turn it around and decorate it with a, one of those vibrating tools or a decorating tool? How do you hold it in the chuck? How do you, if you wanted to decorate it with a texturing tool, how would you do that? You you'd normally do that before you start working on the stem because it's going to put a lot of a chatter tool and or a, um, a tool that has a, um, a wheel. I don't know if you can see it up close. Okay, I can get it closer. Just a second. Hold it still. There. That type of let me sort it one way. No, don't move it, Jordan. Well, I'm trying to find a white, white spot behind it so you can see it better. Okay. Um, you can see it. This has teeth in it. It has, you can buy them with smaller teeth or bigger teeth, kind of like a spur on a cup of boot. Um, but they, what you, that puts a lot of chatter in itself on it, so you don't want to weaken it, your stem, until you get your end uh, completed. All right, let's talk about bottle swappers real quick. Um, for those that have turned bottle swappers, um, there's a lot of things happening right now with the swappers themselves. And for those that haven't, um, there are a lot of sources for bottle swapper. I'm talking about the not the turn part, but the part that goes in the bottle. Um, they have them in all types of textures of 
stainless steel, which is by far the best. They won't be affected by wine, acids, or anything else in the whatever uh, beverage you put the sopper in. Uh, they have them in chrome plated. Many of the chrome plated will be eaten away fairly quickly with um, <coughs> uh, acids and so on. Uh, examples of these. Here's an example of a, a chrome one. Chrome sopper. This is a chrome sopper. Okay. It's um, has rings that you have to insert in the in the um, well, they're in there. Um, but these are nice, they're pretty, but they tend to disappear um, with this with the um, acid. The the best I have found and the ones I like to use are the stainless steel. This is a stainless steel one from uh, SS Niles, Ruth Niles. She kind of pioneered the stainless steel. And uh, besides having a quality product, she's a good person to work with. <coughs> you can put a stopper. Um, using uh, corks, uh, which uh, are nice. You put a, a dowel in the end of the bottle stopper and then you slide the cork on and glue it. Uh, there are um, silicone stoppers that do the same thing as the cork, except they're better and they will, they'll last a lot longer. Um, one of the things that I found with the Ruth Niles ones is she had to have them pointed as I showed a minute ago, but she had gone to a one that with more rings. Uh, ones with four rings are for wine bottles. One, ones with five rings are for whiskey bottles. The pointy ones have a sharper, oh, there we go, have a sharper taper from here to here and tend not to seal as well. So these new ones, plus these, you can stand them up on, a, on something and display your bottle stopper. Um, here's a bottle stopper that's a little wine cup. Uh, we've got several more. One of the things Ruth Niles is doing is, is in, in conjunction with uh, Eugene Soto, member of our club who makes mud blanks, is he has gone to acrylic blanks. Oh, they're really pretty. Uh, that's one. This one's kind of got some wild circles and curly cues in it. This one is you can see the reds, the reds are really vibrant. And he's got another one that I don't know how many people will remember this. What does that remind anybody of? Anything? The colors? Ice cream. Neapolitan ice cream, maybe? Or I think it looks better, more like the, um, the uh, coconut candy that uh, yeah. is from Neapolitan as well. So that's a Another bottle stopper that works well. Um, one of the things that um, I went, along with a reunion that I went to, I made for all the men bottle stoppers. And I made, took, made out of the skeet, put a little turquoise in it, and put a state quarter in it from whatever state they were from. Kind of a neat way to make it. There's a different type of Ruth Niles. Here's one that I made, looks like a little stocking cap. And one of the things about it, it's hollow inside for about 
well, maybe just three eighths of an inch so that it slides down over the top of the bottle and hides the seam that this one, for instance, has, has a seam on you can see where this, the, the bottle stopper hides and looks like it's further down in the bottle. One of the unique ones I've done, this is chrome, I wouldn't do it, but it's a bottle stopper using diamond wood, but it's also uh, has a corkscrew. Kind of neat. Where did you get that kit from? Uh, either Woodcraft or I, I believe. One thing I forgot to mention, and I'll do it now, I'm sure some of you have may have seen these before. <laughs> Little weed pots. I found that they make a nice, put a top on it, and um, makes a nice gift. You get two in one. You get a top and a place to put little flowers in. Um, looking for another bottle stopper. Here's a, another different bottle stopper that's shape of a jug. And it's, again, it's recessed like the other one was. Here are two of them that uh, I mentioned a while ago they had silicon uh, stoppers on them. Uh, these are, um, like I said, soft stuff like that, and you put it over a dowel. And uh, again, you can turn just about any shape you want. Uh, these both have a, a Texas uh, Kobachons in the top, something to decorate them up. A couple item thoughts on, on the design of the uh, stoppers. You can make them any shape you want. This one is, a, like I said, a different shape. The important thing is you don't want a bottle stopper that's uh, too tall, because then you want a refrigerator if there's any wine left. And um, secondly, uh, you don't want one that comes to a sharp point, because when you push it down into the wine bottle, it can be painful, I've heard. Not that I've ever done. <laughs> Any questions about bottle stoppers yeah, examples? The one that's on there. Oh, yeah. And then we have one more bottle stopper. And this will be a favorite of people like Desbro and um, people that have been making um, gnomes. This is a bottle stopper here. Come here. <laughs> Here's how it looks on a, a bottle. Oh, there we go. Cute. Oh, okay. There you go. So, all the things you can do with it. You can just let your mind run crazy. Turning a bottle supper. We're going to do one real quick. I start out with a bottle stopper. Um, this one's one and a half by one and a half by about three and a half or so. Three is an ideal length. It just, just happens to be sitting around. Everybody tightens both sides of these. I see so many people tighten one and done. Someday that's how they come apart. Putting a bottle stopper together to start with a blank. Uh, you need to drill a hole for the, the uh, screw part and or the dowel to go in. In this case, we'll be doing the Part. Um, there's two sizes of, of uh, dowels or screws. Um, depending on whether you're using softwood or hardwood. The hardwood, you want to use a little larger. In this particular case, with you working with most bottle stoppers, an 11 32nd drill. 
Uh, the reason being is the screws will not mash the fibers as much on a hardwood as they would a softwood. So for a softwood, you use a 5 16th drill and that allows the, the screw um, threads to, to bite into the wood better. In this particular case, we've got a medium wood. I'm gonna go ahead and use the larger drill, a piece of a sheet, hope this will hold. The depth of the drill is the length of the screw, plus just a little bit. And that's what you want to drill. So you want to drill it looks like um, as Jim gave me a ruler. Looks like right at a half an inch, maybe just a, a sixteenth of an inch over. So that it has plenty of depth. So we'll drill that first, which is what size bit is that, Gordon? What size bit? Oh. What size bit? Uh, this one I'm using a uh, 11 32nd. All right, thank you. So the distance is going to be, I've got a mark already on this drill, so I can go ahead and do that. I didn't bring one, but normally I would use a starter drip bit to get a good solid hole in it. And, um, Drill about 500, roughly. Designed for this. Mandrels are um, <clears throat> size, you can see it, the bottom of this. Um, anyway, there's a, a, a bushing, if you want to call it that, built in, which matches to the, the, um, the, the, actual uh, sopper bit or sopper metal piece. So that's what you would turn to. To drill this, we drilled it. First step I take, because I want a good clean uh, thread, is I use a um, machine tap that is designed for bottle stoppers, which is kind of neat. This is a manual step. When you, after you drill this, depending on um, the types of wood, but most any wood, it's a good idea to um, pour some, put some CA on the threads and um, let it dry and then re-thread re it with this tap. Um, and it gives you a good set of threads that will last you a lot longer. Gordon, where did you get that tap from? Um, I bought this one from, uh, again, Ruth Niles. Oh, okay. This one's locked in there. I turned it too far. This is not holding the, the, this thing. Mine's too far out. I usually go to uh, an inch shop. Okay. That's the problem I've had with my vases. There we go. I got it going. Okay. Anyway, 
that that thread looks pretty good in there. I'm not going to go through the CA part, but it's just a matter of um, putting some CA in the in the hole and. <coughs> You need to put thin CA and just kind of roll it around or what? Mm -hmm. Just a good comment. Uh, Debbie said that you put some CA in it and then let it just coat the, the threads that are in there. Then I usually just put some, give it a shot of accelerator and it hardens up very quickly. Do you re-tap it after you do that? What? Do you re-tap it after? I missed the last word. Do you re-tap it after you put the CA in it? Yes, you re go back and re-thread it, basically. Yeah. And that gives you a good solid thread. Thank you. The next step is to actually put it on the mandrel and start to shape it. Um, there's two ways, depending on what you buy or what you have, you may already have or want to change. Uh, Ruth Niles has both. One has a MT2 that um, fits the head stop, and that's where you're going to do your shaping. And if you use that, you must, that or you'll be chasing everything all over the your shop must use a drawbar. A drawbar is good for a lot of different things, but the for whatever device you have, if it has threads in it. A drawbar locks this to the Seen that All right, so now with that screw into the eight end of the MT um, taper, it, that's locked. That won't come out for any reason. You're safe. I can do it that, or there's another one that screws over this and is secure in that way. Next step would be to screw this on. Go along in the final one. Okay. Let's find some nylon bushings you can put in this and it will uh, fill the gap and secure the. Also help it come off later. Okay, we're going to round this so a little bit of wobble won't make any difference. I'm going to use a cup center for the point. Um, maybe you can see better. My little that's a, something I found is that with a couple magnets, these little inexpensive. Um, Lights, put a couple magnets on those, put them there, and you've got light on your subject. Kind of neat. Where'd you get it? The lights are dollar nine nine and dollars for them, or whatever. All right, we're gonna. I 
this is one of the fun parts. You can shape it any way you want. There's no limit. You can shape it with places for the fingers to go into it. Okay, good. Uh, you can shape it to have a round top. Shape it to have a concave. You can go in with a forcer bit and drill a um, hole the size of a quarter dime or whatever you want to put in there, penny. Um, you can put Kompachans in there. You can put any. You can. Some people have um, I've seen put flowers in the end and put uh, clear epoxy on it, and they're kind of pretty. The big thing is you can do what you want. Uh, I'm going to make very loose with this for now, just so you can see what what you can do. Gordon, isn't that a little long though, right there? Is it a little bit long? Yes, I was going to. I'll make a comment on that in a minute. I'll have some room primarily to uh, do some shaping and parting on. This is just a length I happen to have laying around the shop. Now, this is about four and a half inches long. We'll probably take it to down to about three inch. Um, just to position it. And we'll park that off. We'll make it easier turning to. She can use uh, changing You can shove it in on the bottom. Um, we'll sand it up a little bit and put it 
four. Well done. Have you have you uh, tried using your corks for bottle stopper? Corks? I've, I've used them, but they don't last very long. I've got a couple of them, and I've given some, but um, most people like the, uh, the silicone or the metal better. Um, were you able to tap it, cork? You don't tap it for that. You just drill the hole and put a dowel the size of the uh, inside of the cork hole. Oh, okay. It's Thanks. just a dowel. It's not a uh, screw in. Good question. Gordon, does that hole? Does that part of it? Gordon, does that hole in the cork go all the way through, or just uh, halfway or so? When you're doing the uh, cork one, you, does the dowel go halfway through it or all the way through it? All the way through? All the way through. Okay. Go ahead. Where's the cork? Is that the one in there? Where's that? Let me get where I can take this. See the cork hole through the middle? I don't have any finish to put on it, but you can put just about any finish you want to on it. Um, safety wise, food wise, of course, most finishes are, when they cure, they're food safe anyway. And that food's not going to normally get in touch with uh, any of these things. Stand it up. I don't know if you see it up here or not. No. Yeah. Has a display stand on the bottom of it so you can show your collection if you're so inclined. It's got that's a full ring, so normally that would be used with a wine bottle. Do you ever put glue on the threads? You can, but um, if you ever wanted to change it, of course, it'd be. Pretty difficult to take apart. Um, okay. If you're doing a plastic one, um, I don't know, or acrylic, I'm sorry, not plastic, acrylic, well, they're the same thing. Um, I never have, but some people, because you might be go to pull the out of the wine bottle and leave that in the wine bottle, which you don't want to do. So maybe glue, glue would be a good idea. Um, see if I'm missing anything before I give up. Oops, I'm, I'm on the hand. You have a good time. Good time. Um, we covered hollowing it out. We didn't do it, but you with a portion of it instead of you just drill it out. Um, 
think that pretty well covers everything I was interested in. Anyway, you can turn turn them at Christmas time, give them a gift, and turn make a bottle happy if it lasts that long. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. Good job, Gordon. Very much. Good job. Gordon, thanks, Debbie and Jim. Have a great evening. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for being here. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Jim.